Onward and upward. Onward and upward. We got this. We got this. One glass half full attitude, right? That's how we work around here. One benefit of being injured is that uh, I get a chance to answer your emails. So a lot, a lot of emails rolling in. I'm gonna spend like 30 minutes right now just hammering it out, hammering it out. So here we go. And then outside to the patio for the shoes. Oh, good times, everybody. Good times. Mm. Mm, there's the boys. Just uh, waiting on Mama and, and Seth, aren't we? Us boys are starving. Let's do this. Let's do this. Fresh veggies. Oh, butter my bread, butter my bread. Oh, my mama. Mm. Oh, yeah. And we're calling an audible today. Oh, I hate to do it to you guys. Basically, what's an audible where you change you change the play at the line of scrimmage in football. That's called, called an audible. So just like 30 minutes ago, I was looking at the entire collection of shoes and I thought to myself, huh, I'm probably going to be out here till about midnight weighing all of these shoes and I got to wake up early in the morning for my MRI. So I got to get to bed at a decent hour. So anyway, I'm not going to weigh all the shoes today. Why do I want to weigh them for you tomorrow? I will do it tomorrow. I promise. Come back tomorrow for a breakdown of the different weight classes of all the running shoes for trail shoes, road shoes, everything that you see out there on the table. Basically, I, I, I approach it like this. In a marathon, how many steps? And somebody actually has looked this up for me before. Maybe somebody could look it up again. How many steps do you take in a marathon? It's a lot of steps. So I actually think that weight in shoes really can make a difference. Uh, now, it might only be 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. But if you're shooting for a PR, that's a big deal. So and that's just for the marathon. Let's not get me. Don't get me started on a solid like track 5K shoe. So anyway, calling an audible today. Instead, I'm going to break down and let you know all the shoes that I own. And I realize I fully realize Nobody needs this many running shoes, but why do I buy the, all these shoes? It's for me. Yes, I love running shoes, but frankly, it's a lot of them are for you because you're interested in them and you send me messages. You're like, hey, I think you should try the uh, the Nike Terra Kyger 5, or I think you might like the Brooks Ghost 11, etc., etc. And so sure enough, boom, it arrives at the house. And, and actually, there is one more pair that arrived from uh, Sweden that I haven't even opened yet that's not out on the table. So bottom line, I know I don't need this many shoes, but um, I'm excited to break them down for you right now, at least into different categories, so you have an understanding of where I come from when it comes to shoes that I lean toward purchasing and shoes that I don't really lean toward purchasing. Oh yeah, and one last point before we go through all the shoes and run down the different categories, the next running shoe giveaway on this channel is going to be Wednesday, May 8th, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And for all the new subscribers, just so you know, we do running shoe giveaways here on the channel for people who truly, truly need new running shoes and they just can't afford new running shoes. So basically viewers send me shoes and then we do the giveaway and I send them out to all these people literally around the world. So that's gonna happen Wednesday on Facebook. I hate to do it. I wish I could do it on YouTube, but it has to be on Facebook because we have a little copyright situation right now, which will not be resolved until July. So 
Facebook page. My Facebook page is down below in the description. Go down there. If you really want to attend, go like the page, follow, and then you'll get notified when I go live Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm excited for it. We haven't done a, sh a running shoe giveaway in a little bit of time. We probably do at least 12 pairs, maybe 15. We'll just see how many we can get through. So it's gonna be good. Okay, moving on. All right, so basically I've broken the shoes down into four categories and kind of a fifth. I could, you could do so many different categories. For example, you could do winter road running shoes. That could be a, a category unto itself. You could you could do Gore another Gore-Tex category. So shoes that are kind of waterproof or as waterproof as possible. Instead, I'm gonna stick to four. And so here we go. We've got the trail trainers, the trail racers, the road racers and the road trainers okay they're all laid out there on the table for you you see that and uh so let's break it down here we go in the trail training category i've got the la sportiva tempesta gtx the solomon s lab ultra the solomon speed cross 5 the solomon speed cross 4 the Nike Wild Horse 5, and the Innovate Arctic Claw 300, and the Innovate Mud Claw G260. So those are all the trail trainers that I own. Moving on to trail racing shoes, we've got the Nike Terra Kiger 5, which is a, maybe a little debatable that it's a full-on racer. Uh, I think that's how a lot of people will use it. But anyway, I need more time in it before I solidify it or cement it in the trail racing category. Then you've got the Solomon S Lab Sense 6, 6 SG and then just the regular Solomon S Lab for trail racing shoes. So I just have three, just <laughs> three trail racing shoes. Okay, moving on to the road training shoes. You've got the Adidas Ultra Boost 18, which I basically, I haven't worn in 18 months, or sorry, in six months. Um, I just, uh, I don't love the feel of the upper in the Adidas Ultra Boost, just so you know. Uh, I've got the Ultra Torin 3.5, the On Cloud X, the New Balance Beacon, the Brooks Ghost 11, the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo, the Nike Vomero 14, the Nike Pegasus 35, and then the Mizuno Wave Rider Fly Knit. Okay, so that's the road training category. And I will say, the next three shoes I'm putting into a crossover category where basically they could, or sorry, two shoes. I'll just say them. The New Balance Zante V4 and the Nike Zoom Fly Fly Knit. I think those two shoes could be used for racing and for training. All right. I'm just, that's how I approach those two shoes. I like to actually use the Zante in some faster tempo work on the, on the track and you could use it in a race. And frankly, you could almost use it. Uh, I would say like up to six to eight miles in a training run, maybe more, probably closer to six miles. Uh, cause it doesn't, it's a little bit stiff through the midsole, but okay. Moving on to road racing shoes. I've got the Saucony fast twitch eight, I found recently in my closet the Saucony Fast Twitch 6. So that's kind of neat. The Hoka Carbon Rocket, which you've heard a lot about recently. The Skechers Razor 3. The Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro. And the Adidas Audi Zero Audios 4. I also just threw in there for fun my old track spikes from college, the Nike. Uh, Bill Bowerman Myler shoes. It's like these old, it literally, they literally have like some leather in them. They're probably 13, 14 years old, but I just can't get rid of them. So again, the reason I run you through that entire running shoe collection is not to humble brag or anything like that. It's to basically give you the framework for your questions for me. Because now you've seen the entire collection. I don't think I'm missing any um, and it'll probably grow in the not so distant future, I'm sure. But for now, this is what I like to run in. And this is what I'm excited about moving forward. So you can formulate in your mind, okay, these are the shoes that Seth is familiar with. These are the shoes that I can ask him about in the, in the future. And one last point, here you go. In my mind, all you need, ladies and gentlemen, is one pair of trainers and one pair of racers. If that's all you can afford, that's a perfect place to start. I remember training for many years with one pair of trainers and one uh, pair for racing, all right? Uh, now, if you're running on roads and trails, yeah, that collection is probably gonna grow to four to six shoes. And then uh, from there, if you do track workouts and you like the track, you're probably gonna mix in some track spikes. And so the collection can grow very quickly for you, but I'm telling you, you really don't need, you don't need even half that many shoes. I would say, I, I people ask me this, I often say like three to four is perfect. 
two trainers and two racers, um, or maybe three trainers and one racer. If you like to mix up the trainers a little bit more, if that's if that's what's in your budget, that is totally fine. And hopefully I can help, as I mentioned in yesterday's vlog, help narrow down your running shoe selection uh, a little bit by you asking me questions. And I'll do my best. I'll continue to strive on Instagram, on Strava. Well, Strava's a little tough right now, but on Instagram, email, and down in the comments, for your running shoe question. And that beloved question of the day, what is the ideal size of your personal running shoe collection? Like what would you, what do you have now? What would you like to shoot for? Maybe you have too many, huh? Maybe you have 20 pairs or 15 pairs and you're like, whoa, the ideal size for my closet is 10 or eight or whatever it might be. So anyway, you could just answer with a number down below. That'd be sweet. Thanks for watching. Again, tomorrow I'm gonna weigh all of those shoes, break down more the different categories and like what I think is ideal weight for different categories of racing, trail training, uh, road training, etc., etc., etc. Sound good? Thanks for being here. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. We're doing it, everybody, one day at a time. See you tomorrow.